As a company, we want to support healthcare seekers and healthcare providers based in developing countries. Our aim is to help them feel more confident and more in control when it comes to managing their own health or delivering more effective care services. The Medex platform stimulates interaction and codependence in the healthcare system to provide a more integrated landscape accessible to anyone from anywhere. A landscape that enables self-care management, financial and emotional care management, family and medical care management in a more sustainable way. Our range of services includes visibility of healthcare professionals based on expertise or location, knowledge exchange, as well as second opinion to enable doctor-to-doctor -doctor interaction and more precise diagnosis for healthcare seekers. The platform is also accessible to Portuguese and French-speaking communities. To find out more about the services available, log in with your email credentials to access the dashboard. So I will start now. Uh, uh, today, uh, today's video is about uh, the requirements of the care coalition platform that uh, Postgres and the Medicare would like to collaborate uh, in the near future. So, uh, next slide, please. So let me uh, let me share about our company and our work. Yeah. It's like uh, back in 2021, uh, we started the Genesis Cell Network uh, with two founded hospitals. Uh, back then, we only do uh, the open source software, uh, which would help the hospitals in their daily work. And later, later in 2022, uh, we founded the Institute of Vocational Study uh, and the program of uh, caregiver, uh, I mean, like nursing assistant and pharmacy assistant program uh, in the Vocational Institute. And later in the year, uh, we partner with uh, Zero Card Care, uh, which is uh, uh, owned by Dr. Cho. Uh, and then we collaborate together and started a registered apostle med. And then we decided to start a home care coordination program. So uh, on launching it, and in the February of this year, uh, we visited uh, nine schools and then uh, explained them about uh, the, our care coordination platform and, and our program. And they showed interest and they would like to uh, collaborate with us in doing the care coordination event. And in doing so, uh, we also, uh, on the other hand, uh, we are also recruiting the uh, healthcare providers on the other side. It's like, uh, just as shown in the figure, there are uh, more than 40 providers joining us to uh, collaborate in the event. And uh, as you can see, uh, at the end of March, uh, we have uh, created, uh, we have organized and orchestrated nine events in two of the nine schools and, and also 13 of the 40 providers have collaborated in those events. And we, uh, next slide. Uh, and, and the yeah, two, two. Uh, in the yeah, to add on uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Yeah. Uh, John is saying, right? Uh, from the ecosystem standpoint, uh, we have uh, Genesis Value Network uh, acting as a accelerator program. So, uh, Apostle Mary is considered joining the program for the cohort, six month cohort, uh, which is going to be completed by end of May. So, we have a demo day by then. And then we also have some kind of sort of uh, uh, event where we have, we are inviting all the sports, nutrition, and other stakeholders to create some kind of sort of uh, 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 bigger events, uh, which uh, so attracts more participants in the ecosystem, I guess. 
maybe maybe a quick question there uh, dr john can you go back please uh on do you expect us during for that demo event that the uh, um uh, zikawa the kwake <laughs> the wakake sorry uh, can already demo something and pilot something you know around this project during your demo day or there is no expectation there for me just for me to understand okay uh, technically speaking right uh if we could share the audience the plan right this is where because you see at the same time uh when uh we are uh incubating and accelerating this uh, apostlemet uh, i am reaching out to different investors right? and the one of the investors is like showing some level of interest to invest in uh this uh, apostlemet so by during the demo day right it is more about uh showcasing the plan so we need mm -hmm. just sort of like, okay this is what we are building and then okay. this is uh, these are the projections and then this is how we are going to venture out into South Asia, because the plan is to reach out into, into Thailand as well, because Thailand has 12 million Burmese people. And then uh, eventually, right, there are a lot of schools in Thailand where they all speak Burmese, right? So that's why uh, we are leveraging on this like sort of a 12 million Burmese uh, uh, expat market in uh, Thailand. And then yeah. also at the same time, we are also looking into uh, sort of a Nepal as well, right? So that's, that's uh, and uh, Pakistan. So that's why I think, uh, so a short answer is like we don't have particular expectation from you, but it would be good if we could collaborate and then showcase something for the people. Okay, that's good to know. Yep, uh, go ahead. Yeah. So we are now uh, orchestrating and organizing uh, Care coordination event. Uh, we categorize this into three events cell talk, cell education and talk, and health services, which are like uh, vaccination, medical checkup, and dental checkup, uh, or other training things. And other another one is fourth event, uh, which is coming uh, in, uh, in next month. Uh, it's a fourth competition event uh, where the providers and the school uh, met up and uh, together they get in effect. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, to add on uh, Dr. Dr. John's uh, presentation, right? Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, caregiving, right, in our ecosystem, uh, right now, the problem that we have in the market is that uh, all the, the activities are all ad hoc. So I be it sort of a health screening, or be it sort of a health talk or whatever, right? Whatever activities uh, which is being done in the schools, right? All those things are ad hoc and then unstructured. So this is the reason why, right? We won't really sort of go against this kind of sort of a culture in the ecosystem. So what we are doing is uh, we are thinking of creating some kind of sort of a, a digital ecosystem, which is effectively sort of a, a recording whatever is happening uh, in the on the ground uh, into the health record so that we have something for the providers and something for the schools as well. So that's the, the objective of all those things. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah. So this is what happened right now uh, with the names in it. Uh, hospitals, uh, the healthcare providers, and uh, on the other hand, the schools and students. So. so I do have a question here. So for me, this is the key stakeholder overview of the project we want to run. Do we have during this meeting, one or two or more people part of those 12 hospitals and clinics? And do we have one or two people during this meeting representing the 16 students or the care coordinators? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, for that, right, so, uh, uh, I think there will be another slide uh, explaining about this. Uh, so okay. we'll just move on to the next, next uh, step. Sure. Yeah. So these are the events uh, that have been uh, organized in the school. Okay. Next, please. Uh, this is the current uh, digital record that has been recorded uh, in one of the events. Next slide, please. Yeah, this one is uh, we record it manually on a paper. Yeah. 
Next slide. So uh, currently, uh, the these records are being uh, recorded uh, manually, and some part of them are recorded digitally. Uh, but in the new uh, in the near future, uh, all of the records are our client data, and also the providers' records are to be digitally recorded uh, on the platform, digital platform, uh, as from every event that has that will be taken place. So uh, to explain you in uh, simple terms, right? Uh, all we are saying is that there are going to be a lot of events there, right? So every time there's an event, uh, we are collecting information about the participant. So that's how we start collecting the first uh, record ever coming from the, the, the participants in the ecosystem. Can I pause here for a minute? Because, you know, having had experience with the whole digital health world, the, the step you're making now please realize it's such an important step because without automation, you are kind of seeing in practice how it's happening today, but also simulating in the real world how it should happen when we automate. So it's important that you realize that what you're doing now is going to give us that experience, that knowledge for us to make the, make the technology very, very strong. Because we've, we've observed a lot of people wanting to jump directly into automating. It doesn't work. So the step you're making, our experience shows us that it's always best, even if the technology exists already, to really do this in practice. And this includes countries like the Netherlands. We always need to make that practical on the ground step doing it with the paper, asking the question, feeling the tediousness of the work so we can evaluate really well how automation will help and will impact, which will help us when we actually automate to see if it makes a difference in the life of the people. So we will skip these slides because these are all the details, right? So uh, uh, this yeah. will add any value to this discussion. So we'll get to the next slide. You can explain that summary here. Yeah. So it's the maximum capacity of the M. Uh, so it depends on the uh, school. Uh, there's a file talk again. Uh, there's a minimum capacity of 50 participants which can attend the event and at most 100. Uh, this is by request from the provider so, uh, so that they could focus on the uh, client or uh, their participants, uh, the students in this case. And for health services, it's like uh, things like a destination or medical checkup. So well, we, uh, as far as the previous event that has taken, they can see. Uh, each doctor took about uh, eight to 10 minutes to examine a uh, student. So they, uh, when a team of or four to five doctors come to a uh, school for that kind of event, uh, this is the minimal and maximum capacity that they could deliver uh, a day. And another one is sport event. Uh, it's, it's sport event is uh, just as the same as the other sport events that we have seen. Uh, on the day of the event, uh, the participants or the contestants come in and they participate in a particular sport. And that's it. Yeah. So this is our estimation of the uh, recording the ages of the students and the clients in uh, as Jeff you have mentioned. Uh, we'll be trying to uh, oh, we have recorded some 154 to uh, 400 students data digitally, and in the coming upcoming events, well, we'll be trying to record those 
uh, users, uh, participants, uh, which I've written here is the users, data, uh, their profiles, uh, just as when a person comes to a clinic, uh, they make a patient record. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Uh, whenever uh, whenever they are first time in participating in any of the events that also met and the providers are orchestrating or organizing in their school, uh, uh, when they come to those events for the first time, their data and their profile will be built and it will be recorded. And this is the number of events that uh, are uh, estimatedly calculated through uh, part two and uh, throughout this year. And that's over 63 events in this year. And then those 6,000 users will be recorded and their profiles will be here. So this slide right, really shows the, the current reality that we have. Uh, for our full disclosure review. It took us like four hours to complete this. The reason is because you and I, right, we both know that on the ground, a lot of people don't really know the power of the digital systems. And Dr. John himself is very anxious, even just to come up with these quarter over quarter two quarter three minimum numbers, because all those things are beyond his imagination. This is my, my challenge right now, right? Because I need more. This is the reason why uh, we approach you because this kind of thing always need the guidance from more experienced sort of a profession like you. So right now, right, uh, this, uh, let me just give you a, a quick overview about the starting point. The starting point, I didn't talk about digital hospital or care connection or whatever. I talk about uh, sort of uh, having a business model where they could reach out to like 900 schools. And then after that, uh, I just told, told the, the team to just approach the, the schools and start providing the services one by one physically. And then uh, I, I pushed them to think about providing the same kind of services to 90 schools. So 9 to 90 school itself is already overwhelming enough for them to do the thing, the same thing without the help of the digital sort of uh, platform. So this is the reason why, right, when you see this, right, if you look at it, estimate from our experience, this is very sort of a slow and this is very bare minimum. But uh, of course, this is like a serious queue and the current reality of the team that we have right now. Yes. Yeah, you, you finish on? I think... Uh, so, I just want to... Yeah, so no, the rest no, are no, wait. Not, not important. Yeah, wait, wait. I just want to give um, some ideas to the team regarding what you've just highlighted. Again, you said I've... I've seen other ways, and, and that's one of the things we try to bring to countries where we do implementation or do some work. And I've had the luxury to work for companies like Philips, where I run really huge programs. In general, when you are in at, at such a step, and this is more tips I'm giving you, uh, which will be required when we work together as well, is you always, when you are in estimation mode, for everybody, estimation is tough you build three scenarios. So from what I heard from Ong, this is your worst case scenario. But you, for yourself to feel comfortable, it's important that you have a normal case and an optimistic case scenario. The optimistic, you can always, of course, on the side highlight, we are optimistic in case this, 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 this happens, which, you know, you highlight some of the things you believe if it goes well, this is how big and how, how fantastic we can be. And now you've highlighted the worst case. And I can imagine it doesn't make you feel comfortable because you kind of feel maybe we can do better. So I think my suggestion is often when we are still at estimation to make sure you don't lose anyone. You show the worst case scenario. You show the optimistic case scenario and you show what will be kind of the middle ground. In general, whether it's investors, customer partners, they will always try to rely more on your normal case scenario, which takes into account rea rea uh, the realistic side of the story. But they will keep in mind that, hey, you've said it can go super well. 
which is there, but it can go also super bad. And this is what it will look like. Just wanted to share this tip, just, you know, if you face this kind of challenges in the future or when you're communicating, not having a clarity yet on how to move forward, um, that would be the way I would go if I were you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is yeah. the bigger challenge I am facing right now. Yeah. One against many. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Yeah. Uh, this is the events that have taken place uh, in the previous days. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please. You want to highlight the actual data? Uh, on the ground so that uh British has a better understanding of what is happening on the ground yeah sure so just like uh we started on 9th of march uh which is uh other last move thing uh so we made a health talk event for 50 students in each in their age range from 6 to 11 years old uh provider is doji clinic uh, she's a pediatrician and she gives a health talk about uh, personal hygiene and health hand washing. And on the same day, there's another cohort of the same topic, and there's another event on that day. So it's like the, there are two events on, happening on that day. And, and the next one is uh, Dr. Y. Uh, Dr. Y is also here in our region. Uh, she has uh, she has given the health talk about the reproductive health uh, on the same institution, uh, it's International School Rangu, and our uh, ages ranging from uh, 12 to 18 years, the participants. Uh, just as same as uh, Dr. Clinic, Dr. Wine also gave uh, two cohorts uh, on that day. Uh, and the next thing is uh, on uh, on the lower corner on the left is uh, Niji Medical Service. Uh, it's a group of doctors uh, that they have uh, they have delivered a medical checkup, which is a general medical checkup, uh, measuring the students' uh, basic uh, health, data, uh, health data and dental records, uh, which they also recorded digitally uh, on the form that I've shown you in the previous uh, four slides. And it and the uh, it has taken us about uh, five to six hours on that day, and a total of one hundred fifty four students are joined, uh, ages ranging from two to eight years. They're very young. Yeah. Uh, another one is uh, by then by Dr. Hay. Uh, Dr. Hay clinic is a uh, toning rehabilitation clinic. And that, is, that event is uh, for the teachers and the staff, uh, staff in that same institution. Uh, they uh, there's a school use scanning event. Uh, we scan the spine positioning and their uh, posture health on that day. Uh, 46 employees from the institution trying uh, to are uh, the physically uh, manually recorded paper record that I've shown in the second slide. And it is in the last week, uh, last week Friday, and uh, this is the latest event that has happened. It's a pre health talk event uh, on Canadian High School, uh, uh, which is another institution, and 28 students uh, in their 14 to 18 years of age, they try for health talk about uh, substance abuse and influenza uh, vaccination. And another one is reproductive health. Uh, also, uh, teacher Li Shine is uh, also one of the coordinator from the food side. Yeah. So uh, after these events, uh, we recorded the uh, Patient, a patient is very published with the uh, parents and students data uh, manually and some part uh, digitally. Yeah. A total of 442 students, 46 teachers, data testing 
So uh, uh, roughly like 500 uh, uh, students per, per, per month uh, with a manual sort of a system, right? There's no orchestration. So uh, by right, if we just go on this way, right? We only reach to 6,000 by after only after 12 months. Looking this as uh, like progressively, right? So this I'm kind of sort of a projected sort of a, a, a estimate, but uh, we might want to sort of uh, increase the rate of uh, 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 registration, right? To mm -hmm. maybe like 10 folds. So like maybe like sort of uh, right now, 500 per sort of uh, a month. So maybe if you just do 10 for, then we could do this in like, not, not 10 for like, maybe like start from three times, right? Three times then 1,500 per month. Then this will just speed up the, the process of uh, uh, keeping the records of 6,000 students eventually. So this is uh, where, uh, we see the challenge, right, in doing all those things manually. I mm -hmm. think this really mm -hmm. paints the picture of the problem, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the, uh, yes, this is uh, the optimistic, uh, my optimistic version of uh, user insight yeah. in the future. Yeah. 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 So uh, this is also uh, uh, this is how I uh, my intention or I, I try to project it to the record. And uh, as far current uh, currently we are physically all orchestrating and uh, the K coordination events between providers and school and manually recording the physical and mental fitness and we give out by uh, manually calculating their uh, care coordination and health data. And maybe in six months, uh, we could use uh, some kind of a digital system to uh, make those uh, providers and the school coordinators interact by themselves and the system will record those and give out the uh, features of the uh, health, health uh, mental and physical health data of the students back to the school should uh, back to the owner of the school pages or who, which will be the students and the school. Yeah. And in the 18 months or so, uh, there will be much lesser uh, intervention of of uh, the net, and they will be uh, fully uh, fully interacting with each other, and other yeah. schools and other providers can try on the platform by themselves, and they could learn how to maybe the smaller uh, smaller I mean like uh, more junior health healthcare providers or maybe solo tech health providers could try with their products and services onto the platform, then they could give out their health services to the standard of the, this digital system, which they could learn from that and interact with the school. And, and from the outcome of the interaction with the, the health data of the school and the health service quality of the providers, which will be shown on the platform. Of the digital system. So, Dr. Yeah. John, can can I interrupt you uh, for some uh, for, for one minute? So we have ten minutes before three o'clock, three o'clock Dutch time. I think eight o'clock your time, if I'm not mistaken, or seven fifteen. Um, we have guests, so I see Dr. Uh, Wine and Dr. Uh, Hain. I love that we spent one hour letting them to really, really talk. So if you can try to wrap up your the project presentation, you know we talk to each other with Ong as well, but we don't always have them. So I really, really want us to spend time to hear them out. Both your their experience with you doing it, you know, without the automation, 
but also where do they see the automation playing a critical role in what they're doing? How do they envision it changing? I really want them to spend some time and, and really, really articulate it for us because it's gonna help us when we want to implement. You and I, together with Ong, we have enough time to talk to each other. So please, if you can wrap up in 10 minutes, then we can let them express uh, the, their opinion. So uh, we have reached. Uh, that I, I think I think you should uh, use in use in Burmese because like to rub up right quickly right. So uh, Burmese is the best language for you to just rub up, and then we can, can start I, can talking. I, uh, can I interject? Sorry, I'm Dr. Hey. Hi. 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 Sorry, my camera is not working. Very nice to meet you, P Patricia. Okay. <laughs> so, Pleased to uh, meet you, Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, the, yeah, my camera is not. Uh, working uh, for the moment, uh, but okay. uh, I, I'm not uh, quite free today, so I, I'm just participating uh, this meeting. Uh, so I, I only, you know, catch a, a few, a few, just just only a few inf informations from your meeting. So uh, thank you for uh, asking my. Uh, I think you are you, uh, asking my opinion about and um, th this project, right? Or you want you want to know about uh uh sorry uh, I think your question is your your request is uh our experience about this kind of automation right so we we'll, doctor doctor Hain we will get to that I was suggesting to doctor doctor to doctor John to kind of wrap up the project explanation so we can give oh, you together with doctor Wine and all the other guests the time to really oh, yes. tell us, you know, if you have some time, just let Dr. John close and then we can give the floor to you guys to really, really tell us how you feel, how you view it and, and so forth, okay? And so, so may I uh, say this right now because I, I'm about to go to someone oh, else. So I, sure, I, I'm, I'm to sure, sure. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yes, go on. Oh, sorry, I, I will talk after Dr. John, okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, sorry, sir. So I'll wrap up now. Uh, the thing is that the provider oh, side... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Patricia. I'll talk in turn. Uh, เสียจังเลยอาจารย์ไม่ได้แบบว่าตัวอะไรแล้วแล้วตอนนี้กว่าอะไรแบบแบบนี้ก็ recording ลงมาแล้วตัวเราไอ้เนาะไอ้เนา
Yes. So, I mean, my, my suggestion when we were, we would have presented the project was to hear both from the providers and potentially from the recipients if we have them in the call. So schools and health providers to tell us their vision. I really want free format, Dr. Hain, Dr. Wine, you've done some work with Dr. John, you know, around those health education, health talk, health services, but it's not done in an automated way today. And I wanted to hear from you, how do you envision it if it's automated? How would you see it running, working? So we can do it with speaking, but we had prepared the jam board where you could actually type it. So, but it's up to you. You can just tell us your own story, Dr. Hain, and later Dr. Wine, how you see, you know, automation playing a role in making the work you're doing more efficient, easier, maybe the possibility to reach more students. How do you envision that? And how did you experience with that automation as well? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, my understanding is automation is like uh, using a digital system to uh, uh, facilitate our head, uh, you know, uh, healthcare process, right? So yes. I, I have some uh, limited experience with that kind of technology. So mm -hmm. in my clinic, uh, I have my own small clinic. So in, in my clinic, I've tested some kind of uh, medical record system using uh, this was smartphone application. So mm -hmm. uh, it yes, uh, it helps me a lot, but uh, it uh, still has some you know uh, barriers because uh, we uh, uh, we are not very fam familiar with that kind of technology. <clears throat> we, we we get uh, we are just used to our normal paperwork mm -hmm. and uh, usual our manual you know. Uh, our manual uh, methods, right? So yeah. uh, we have to take some time to, uh, you know, use that uh, computer or phone to uh, our uh, to type or to record the patient's uh, pictures or patient's, uh, you know, conditions. So uh, for me, I have some. I, it takes more time to use uh, this uh, kind of technology than uh, our usual methods. Because maybe this is our, you know, uh, uh, you know, our, our uh, little experience or uh, our, you know, unfamiliar to that te technology. So that's my opinion. But I, I think if we can uh, use uh, this more and more, and um, I think the, the it's uh, it can help us, uh, you know, more than now on. So I, I think I'm just, you know, trying to predict those. Uh, technology in our daily practice. So that's that's uh, one of my experience. And another thing is uh, with Dr. John, we, you know, we uh, we made a project at our, uh, one of the schools, you, I think uh, you, you have seen that uh, one of our pictures on that KBEC school. So mm -hmm. we, you, we have, uh, we, uh, we tested some uh, AI technology, you know, uh, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence technology to assess our the, the patient's uh, spines you know yeah. in order to uh, uh, detect the postural the deformities on something like that so this is uh, another experience uh, but also those uh, technology have some limited because uh, the, 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 the the technology is, is not ready to you know share publicly they are just on tests you know, stage. They are just testing uh, beta tests, I think, and beta test stage. So now the technology is uh, has to be updated, and we have to wait for those, you know, uh, updated uh, information. So we cannot, you know, apply all those uh, technologies in our daily practice fully. You know, we have mm -hmm. some, uh, uh, you know, obstacles still. So yeah, the, these are just my opinions i think it it it, 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 it does what you want to know or not <laughs> oh uh, oh absolutely i mean that's that's your perspective i would nevertheless have couples of questions so what i hear from you when it comes to the future is there is potential interest to use 
technology automation, but then I hear we don't have enough time to actually do it. Um, yes. We are not sure it's going to really help us remove the traditional way of working. Uh, yes. It and cannot then, still, uh, yes. Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, it, it cannot. Uh, we only use our traditional methods for now. We, uh, we cannot still, you know, up, uh, apply uh, the modern technology very much yet. Hmm. So tell, that, that's tell what me, I what yeah. is the one thing that Dr. John Ong and I, if we would bring it into a technology, you will start using it and you will advise your patients to start using it. Yes, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna say, um, uh, I'm gonna say first, I think just in my mind, I think it's maybe language, right? <laughs> because in language. our country, yeah. yes, in, uh, language barrier is still a big problem. So I think for patients, if we are showing this in English, you know, uh, language using technology, they are not, they cannot un understand, I think. So, and uh, we also, you know, have some barriers uh, about typing the disease name or the symptoms, you know. So I think on, the only thing I, I, if I have to say that will be the language, language barrier. Language, if we give it to you in Burmese, you sure your patient will be willing to go into the system. Yes, but the translation has to be, you know, great. Uh, you know, more, yeah, I understand yes, that. The, the right translation can be more, can, can cause more misunderstanding. But that, yeah. that's my, uh, yeah, yeah, one of my experience. I'm just translating English language into Burmese directly, but they still cannot fully understand. <laughs> but, we, let, we have to, yes. Let me challenge you, Dr. Hain. If we would bring okay. you instead what I call FinTech for healthcare, I don't fully know how the, 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 the financing system works in, in healthcare in Myanmar, but if we would allow the diaspora to pay the bills of your patients so they don't have to worry or pay the insurance so you don't have to worry about the patient. Is that a functionality that will be encouraging for you to actually go fully digital health and medical records? Plus you the mean, language, uh, of course. You mean you, you will provide more funding for language translation? Like that. Not no. funding for tr for language translation, but funding. I mean, other op other options for funding and paying the medical bills by your patients. Yes, yes. I think it will it will have in uh, in one way or another. I, I think it it can. I think it will it will. It will work. We are unfortunate. Yeah, we're losing you. Hello, once can in you while. stay here? Yeah, we can hear you now. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, were you were yeah, yes. you were saying that it can help, but I still hear someone that's not fully sure. Here, look, here is what our challenge <laughs> is. When we hear doubt, it tells us that our future customer partner is not sure yet. And what I'm trying to do now is figuring out from you as a hospital owner, manager, a doctor, what is that critical thing you need in order to make a step into the digital world? This is what I'm trying to look for from you. And I really, really would love, even if you don't answer now, Take your time, think about it. And if you could come back to us even via email about this, this thing that if we provide it to you, of course, you mentioned the language. And I think with behind the language, there is the cultural context. Um, if we can bring that to you, you're sure that you, your hospital, and the community around your hospital will actually use the system. Hello. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Sorry, we can uh, yeah, hear you. The, the internet connection is not very good here. 
so uh, I think uh, maybe uh, I have uh, I I need to leave really really right now. So mm -hmm. uh, if you want more information, I I will text you from uh, 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 with uh, from Doctor John. Okay. So I, yes. I will share my uh, experience or uh, my comment about your uh, project. Okay, I, I will email you or something like that. Okay. Thank you so very much please, for your time. Thank you. So thank you also. Please me me and leave right now. Bye bye. Uh, sure. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I guess we can have the same question for Dr. Wine. I, I hope you are with us and uh, uh, I can see all the work you've been doing together with Dr. John and the health talk. So I'm not sure if you are uh, here. Yeah, we'd love to hear your experience uh, and would love to see as well, how would automation help your work? Um, taking into account the cultural aspect as well and how we can do this project to facilitate your job. Yes, um, for me, you know, I've always worked with a uh, uh, person to person in, me, in public talks, uh, mostly. Uh, uh, the point of that uh, automation comes in uh, for the first, re re for the very first time here. So I'm very interested in uh, what we, uh, how we can collaborate uh, to our works. So uh, my, my, uh, mostly my work is like, uh, uh, how talk is like a person to person communication, and I always uh, have to work with uh, presentations and and uh, we interact uh, with uh, like a post assessment uh, quest quiz. So uh, it's only like that. So um, I'm really interested in that. Well, what will, will you bring bring to us now? Yeah. And is the is the health talk uh? Teaching, training platform? Is it a one-way information platform? Is it a two-way communication platform? Uh, do you also use that to do consultation? Can you elaborate more on what you do during this health talk and what you want to do in the future with this health talk? Sure. Uh, currently, I'm only... Uh, um... I have my private uh, Zoom classes for the uh, child, uh, adolescent health, edu health education, and mm -hmm. then th that's a uh, public health, a uh, public uh, school talks with a uh, apostle mat, and then uh, yes, uh, that's 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 for all for the current moment. But we have uh, we have uh, plans to make like uh, the online learning uh, classes. Uh, for, well, for with the collaboration of the other uh, companies, such as the some uh, dating apps and, and some other uh, media media. Yes, yes, yeah. We're planning to have online uh, Irish classes. Okay, and you focus on reproductive girls and reproductive health, or is it everybody, including men, uh, uh, boys? Yes, yes, yes. Both, 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 both sex, both sex and reproductive yeah. health. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm, you don't do any consultation. It's just learning. Uh, uh, for the for the moment, I haven't done any any consultation. Uh, any any private consultations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this will be mainly for the health talk. And in mm -hmm. the future, if you would think, you know, using technology to do what you do today with those adolescents. How far do you feel you could go with technology? How far do you want to go with technology? Of course, I've you know I've always uh, admired that you know as that uh, uh you know uh, YouTube videos YouTube uh video uh, vlogs from the uh, other countries and they were very interesting and in, you know creating like with creating with the uh, 3D animations and kind of like cartoons images so i'm very interested in that 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 thing Thank too you. and then yes and for the for the our for our next uh plans on the directing the making some vlogs with uh, any other media media account companies and uh, yeah oh i i think that's uh you know 
that technology will help us very advanced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you do, you give those learnings in Burmese at the moment, not in English, I yeah. guess. Yeah, uh, actually, I I I told I I tell them in both languages, both, both. some of them, okay. yes, in some languages, because you know some private uh some kids from this uh private schools prefer in English. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then my question will be: Is it a mandatory health uh, talk they need to have with you? or is it free format? Or it depends from school to school. And if it's mandatory, do they need to take a kind of a test or exam after they've, you've given the talk just to check if they remember it and if they kept sure. it? So is there a close the loop from the student to check if what you've given us, you know, lessons and tips, if they remember it? Yes, yes, I, 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 I do, I do. I do some uh, post postdoc assessments. Okay, okay, with the, the adolescents and students and uh, uh, and this happens during the class or a few weeks after your your teachings? Oh, just immediately after the class. Uh, I mean, uh, for, the, for the talks, uh, for the health talks in uh, private schools, I, mm -hmm. we, we give the, that uh, post, uh, post talk assessment and then some uh, like a like kind of a review for on that uh, and review and comment for on that that uh events mm -hmm. yeah yes and, and how do you feel about there is something that you know it's pretty common i i think more in the 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 eu i see that a lot we call it peer-to-peer -peer education which yes. will be you giving the class yes which is important but also creating a platform for the kids to share with each other yeah. about that topic and what they've learned what they've seen what they've mm -hmm. heard mistakes that were made is this something you feel there is an opportunity to open a door for um in such a project, but also among your students or your your adolescents, your kids. Sure, sure, it will be a very great, great idea. Okay, okay. Yeah. So peer to peer education is interesting to explore. Okay. Uh, mostly, uh, these uh, these kids are nowadays, uh, you know, they have uh, they have known a lot. <laughs> they have known a lot compared to that that ages in our ages. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Like uh, they they already know some uh, most of the facts, but uh, it's not correct and maybe it's not very completed. So we have mm -hmm. to share much more information, much more systemic and academic information to them. And then you know they uh, they usually talk with each other about these uh, these repetitive things, uh, and so I'm sure that. Uh, peer group education will be a lot way much better than you know teaching Absolutely. from the yeah from parents the teacher. and from the teachers yes because they have no, they, they, they love to they love to learn by themselves yeah no, they, absolutely. they love to explore yeah Absolutely. No, absolutely. Yeah. We, we will think about it from a functionality point of view. Maybe a question for you, Dr. John. Do you, so, the because I heard from Dr. Wine that it's through the collaboration with you that she goes and gives those uh, talks. Do you have an agreement with the school where the the talks need to be given? And is it like a curriculum from the students of course, we're talking now about the reproductive health, and I'm sure there will be other topics. But if we focus on reproductive health, what I see in many schools across the globe is it's a moral class they need to take, you know, and they need to actually take an exam on it. Is it that type of mandatory agreement or it's just a free format type of class? Students are not obliged to join that class. They don't have a credit at the end of that talk. How is the agreement looking like with some of your those schools and partners? Yeah, uh, the school, uh, for that event, uh, the school invited us for a war health day, which falls on the 7th of April. And World mm -hmm. Healthy Health Talk yes. event that yeah. says that no okay. credit was given. Yeah. Okay. Just an ad hoc event for, for a particular day. Yeah. Okay, that's that's good to know. If we stay on the reproductive health 
angle, which I can imagine at a certain age, you know, around the 10, 12, when the kids are starting to understand their body, maybe more for you, Dr. Wine. Do you think we need to leave that responsibility to, to stimulate the students to take those classes to the school? Or shall we open a door for parents to also say, hey, we need that content to come to our kids even when they're at home? Of course, this is reproductive health linked, but I yeah. just want to see, shall we leave it up to school? Because of course we're talking just about school, but when we look at it from a reproductive health, maybe there's a room to also communicate directly to the parents and say to the parents, hey, the content is here available. Make sure your kids have access to it, even when they're at home, because it's good that they know what's going on, that they understand their body when the body is transforming. Yeah, uh, your idea is very good, but you know, in our country, it's like Asian and very, it's like the conservative, there are still okay. some mm -hmm. more, very, uh, way more conservative families like that. They, mm -hmm. Some of the parents feel like they, they don't want to talk about these topics to their kids because they, um, they're they afraid of that, that the kids will, you know, become interested in like these mm -hmm. things, uh, you, you know, like this, and some problems mm -hmm. will uh, a bigger so uh, mm -hmm. we are very aware of these things that social and uh, you know cultural uh, barrier in mm -hmm. um, so I have to be very uh, <clears throat> you know I have to very I have to take very care of it uh, about this talk about this thing that uh, I've as for the as for each each and every talks before I speak I always ask them uh, their consent that consent that I do you know about do you know what topics we will be talking about or do you do you agree or do you, do your parents know this 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 talk this talk or what I'm doing uh, so and then uh, I always uh, inform that I, okay I will be talking about this 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 like the, the sexual organs that there will be these uh, words like you, you know I have to take care of it very carefully so mm. uh, your your idea is, is a very good and it's very practical for us, but there is still that that cultural barrier for, for us. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, really afraid if if the parents will allow that their allow their kids to join any any you know that any society any kind of uh, social groups or like this. It's okay. It's okay, and mm -hmm. also for the and also for the aspect of the, you know, the principals for the school, they they also feel like that because they uh, if they feel like the if uh, you know that that the, the parents will complain about the school that mm -hmm. okay that that school is teaching these mm -hmm. things to their kids and those and this the, and this you know these social problems happen so, so uh like blah 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 mm -hmm. so like this so they are very aware of this either mm -hmm. so it's a no but we should i think but we, we should try it at, for the at least yeah <laughs> we should no, try it with the I mean, reform process with the preformed the, constant to the exactly uh, yes exactly yes. i mean the purpose of this talk was to really get into your mind you know if of things happening on the ground and this kind of information is critical technology can deal with that i mean think about it then eh? if there is any program that should be started in a city or in an area because maybe we have a, an agreement with a city uh, we can send an automated um, information first to the parents and they need to sign off through the technology so that's something that can be organized but what's important is to understand it's a barrier that exists and it's fine that it exists, you know, it exists in yeah. many parts of the world still, uh, but then how do we organize that through the technology? By having the information, we can organize it and only the parents giving the consent are we going to let the kids get access to the content. Yes, of course. Now, this is I good insight. Uh, raising hands for while we are talking. Okay, who was raising hand? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, that thing, yeah. So, uh, all the content that, that I want to add uh, mm -hmm. uh, before uh, inviting Dr. Wine for the health call, uh, mm -hmm. one of the two owners uh, asked for me for their health talk, uh, which is uh, on the March 2 health talk event and mm -hmm. also on the 7th. 
and the school owners, the principals talk to me about that they want to deliver those reproductive health codes to their students. And they ask me for the details of the agenda on topics on that day. Uh, once they get those topics, they send the topics to uh, their Viper or Telegram groups with their parents. And they have uh, informed them about the upcoming event uh, and about the topic. So uh, it is an uh, option to opt in or opt out of the event. So uh, if they want to try, they come on that day. Yeah. Thank and, you. Uh, it's kind of a constant taking. Um, yeah. So yeah, when I hear. When I hear the story around health talk, which is very interesting, and I have the feeling maybe that's the first implementation we should go for, which is health education. I, I think it's pretty straightforward and I hope we can have you, Dr. Wine next to us to guide us when we are building you know, the technology part. Um, we need to talk about health services. So I don't know, I see Dr. Uh, Naichi. Uh, medical, I don't know who was representing us there or doing that uh, that exercise, Dr. John. It's important we talk to someone that experienced health services. And I know Dr. Hain gave us a kind of a broader picture, but you could also feel that Dr. Hain was already like, yeah, I don't want to waste my time into a technology. I mean, I see Dr. Wine giving us, you know, a good feeling about, okay, we can go here, we can explore uh... this. So, I, I, I yes, like to really um, uh, sort of jam in and then uh, really sort of uh, uh, update you with the thing, right? So uh, what happened with Dr. Heng is that uh, he is very busy. So uh, okay. at times, right, he is actively involving in testing the technologies, but okay. uh, sometimes like, he is not uh, that uh, business-minded in some okay. cases. So what happened in the past is that we brought in one uh, uh, technology provider okay. from Germany okay. uh, where they provide the AI uh, okay. where they take pictures of the, the, the people yeah. and then yeah. uh, they have some kind of sort of a social correction sort of system. So yeah. he has the experience of testing that technology in the uh, school. Uh, yeah. and that was like some kind of like a special interesting. So uh, technically okay. speaking, right, uh, that is... Uh, so right now, uh, as uh, sort of, uh, you know, right, uh, this thing yeah. is getting organized in a very short notice. So he was yeah. not... Uh, uh, properly Indeed. inform about so, the thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as uh, we ask about automation, because right now, yeah. right, the purpose of this uh, platform is yeah. not to sort of uh, uh, automate yeah. uh, as a starting point, yeah. but uh, just to bring in demand uh, for yeah. the providers from the schools. Yeah. And at yeah. the same time, using this demand as a base for them to sort of uh, automate their operations eventually. So they are seeing the demand first, and then eventually they are seeing the the use cases later, right? Because right so, now, from the way I look at it, the uh, medical record use case are not even that uh, uh, particularly advanced. sort of recognized by the doctors yet, uh, and yeah. as of right now. This is my, my yeah. understanding of this. So yeah, so yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. John, please like, sort of, uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, let uh, someone talk on the side of the providers. Yes, and, and this now you're talking because we we have Ye, uh, Dr. Yeving uh, in the call and he hasn't said a thing, so I don't know if he wants to share his two cents on this whole discussion and how he sees it from a hospital um, administrator point of view. Hello, Dr. Ye. Hey, hi, Ye. Patricia. So, yeah, yeah. Hey, remember hi. me? Hi, 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 hi. Hi. So Hello. tell us, tell us. Hey, well, can, can you excuse us? Uh, because me and Dr. John have to go, uh, yes, from, from where we are right now. Because, okay. Uh, oh, you need to move. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to move because generator is uh, need to stop. Yes. Yeah. No problem. So, uh, okay. can you excuse us for yeah, like five minutes? Sure. We will, sure. Yeah, well, we will, sure. we will join shortly uh, after that. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry, sure. sorry. No problem. So we have also another on. Do I pronounce it well? On Pew? 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 Dr. On Pew, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he Andy. is uh, right now working in a, uh, a school. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called KBC Group of Companies. Uh, they are oh, all together. I'll, 20, I'll love to building. hear the school. I love to yeah. hear the school experience. So, so he is a teacher himself, and then he is also like some kind of like acting care coordinator in the schools of like 22 oh, sort of building. So please. Hello, Patricia. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. I am Dr. Onvitu from ABDC Innovation School. And also I serve as a medical coordinator and also as a biology teacher, a subject teacher for the biology. So at my school, I have to take care of uh, all of my students, uh, like uh, started from the primary level to the uh, secondary level. And I have to take care of both, both of the school in Seven Mile and also the from the chemistry. Uh, and so at school, uh, firstly, I have to check up all the medical uh, but all their medical form and uh, when we open the school we give them the, our school medical form and we have we ask them to fill uh, by their parents and after that uh, i have to check out uh, the primary level students uh, like the normal medical checkup and also uh, their dental care i have to take care of both of them and also when, when they sick, uh, they have to show me at my clinic. Uh, we have school, we have opened our school clinic, so I have to take care of all medical emergency or surgical emergency students. Uh, Sometimes I have to face, uh, I have faced some uh, a big accident, like happening inside the classroom. Uh, the student. So like uh, they run around and overlap each other. So uh, at the time, the lower most one student, their his hold bone in the right, uh, maybe sorry, and in the left hand has broken because of that accident. So I have to take care of that and I have to refer to this hospital properly. And uh, also I have to explain that condition to their parents. Uh, it is the biggest accident in our school and there are so uh, some other like minor trauma uh, like operation and maybe minor structure i have done at the school okay i think the process is very clear uh, dr on the medical form is it done when they join the school is it done every year when they start school or is it done monthly and is it filled in by the uh, parents monthly no uh it's done by a year and uh, at the end of the year and when uh, another year started, we have to fill up the form again uh so okay. at the time of registration i uh, i ordered them to give the medical form to every student uh, when they mm -hmm. apply uh, newly applied and for the old students, uh, I asked them uh, to ask their parents that if there if there is any other changes uh, concerned with the medical form, uh, maybe something like a surgical procedure or something like a medical allergy, uh, drug allergy or something like that. So I have to ask every student about that information because at at the time of uh, maybe uh, acute condition. I don't have to. I I don't have time to ask them uh, if there is any allergy or something like that. I have to take it yes. immediately. I have to take action immediately. So I don't have time to uh or to ask their parents. Uh, there may be some time they don't pick up our phone. So I yeah. can. I I don't have time to take that. Uh, if there is an any any um, acute medical emergency. So, uh, so and also I. I put a point in the medical form, uh, like uh, if they agree, if there is some medical emergency occur with the treatment, uh, I have asked them and also I asked them to sign uh, if there is any uh, 
uh, opinion or something like they want to know more or something like that, uh, they can contact me in time. Uh, I put all this information in the medical form. Okay, so so I do have couples of questions, uh, Doctor. On how do you see your role within the school? Are you the doctor of the school? Are you much more keeping an eye on the kids to and and this way you know the kids that are at risk to need emergency services because they have chronic illness, or do you see yourself as you know treating them if something happens and for that you need the history with you so if something happens you can make the first you know the first uh, emergency uh, treatment mm. can you ask me again i didn't clear i didn't how do you feel so on that, may, maybe you can explain it in in burmese i don't know only if you can help me because i think then it will make it easier so it's much more to okay. see what is you your actual because, uh it was noisy there so i so that's why I think he, didn't, okay. he can understand English, but uh, we will repeat okay. the question. So Dr. Ong, the idea for me is to understand you are a doctor, but you sit in a school. Yes. Do you see yourself yes. as an actual doctor within the school? Or do you see yourself as someone keeping an eye on the healthcare situation of the school? So this way, in the beginning of the year, you gather the intelligence about that, for school yeah. so that you can anticipate who are the clinical ill patients. So who are the patients that have a severe disease? So you need to really keep an, a close eye to those kids. And the ones yeah. that don't have a clinic, a chronic uh, illness that you just say, okay, maybe they need care sometimes. Uh, and we don't really need to keep a close eye. What is your actual role? Is it to be the doctor for the kids? Or is it to kind of be a population health manager of the school? Mm, I think it is sort of then because as a doctor, I have to take care of every student's medical problem, uh, something like uh, some minor sickness or something like that. And also, I'm a, also uh, on, the, on all my 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 opinion is I want I uh, I want to both of them so. The first one is I'm a doctor and I have to take care of their medical sickness or maybe some minor surgical problems. Uh, so uh, I prepare all of them in my school clinics. So I consider myself as a doctor because of that. And also uh, I have to take care of every student's uh, the, their medical problem. And then I'm also a head of uh, discipline department. So I have to take care of every student's uh, concern with the discipline and medical problems. So uh, I think it is one of them for your answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, thanks as well. Thanks very much for clarifying. Is your role available in every school uh, in Myanmar? So every school has such a role or is it only dedicated to some private school, public school also has it? Just for me to understand if this is the same structure in every school. Uh, I think it is, uh, I think also the private school or public school, they are now integrated school clinic is involved in every school when they started to open. So okay. uh, I think it is uh, involved in both private or, uh, private and public school. Okay. Yeah, no, so that's as for the second, second question, as for the mm -hmm. second question, uh, as a chronic disease, their parents just notify me about their, their illness. So I have to uh, closely look after their children if they have any medical conditions goes on with that. Uh, so for example, uh, there is a student concerned with the uh, hematological disease, uh, like a blood disease. Mm -hmm. So he, he has a uh, recurrent nose bleeding concerned with that. So every time when she has nose bleeding, she contact me and I have to contact their parents. Uh, otherwise, uh, what their parents like me to do, uh, they have to take me an action or they, they just want to bring back their children and go to the hospital or something like that. I don't know about that. So I have to contact their parents. So if mm -hmm. they let me to take care of it, 
I just take care of it. Or mm-hmm. if they want to bring back their children, I also let them take care of uh, their children back to this, uh, their, their home or maybe some the other hospital. But uh, if there is any medical or such an emergency, I don't allow to take bring back their children to their home. So I always call an, an ambulance or something like that. Uh, uh, also, I uh, I take I took them to the hospital uh, with their parents. I took along with their parents. I don't mm-hmm. let them only, only the good of them to go to the hospital by themselves. Mm-hmm. This, this this is, is an interest. Yes. This is an interesting one. I will ne- now ask you a question about how you would you would yeah. love it to change. So let's think about those chronically ill patients or let's say uh, uh, individuals or school student, students at school. Yes. Would you in your role love it if you could see every time these students need to go to the hospital or has gone to the hospital that you get a picture of what happened, the diagnosis. So when you're keeping an eye on her, at, on her or him at school, you kind of also again can anticipate and can you see that do you have a view if some of those chronically ill patients suddenly go to hospital the hospital do you get an update of that do you get a new form being submitted to you every time they they go to the hospital or that they have a crisis oh uh, so i i prepare some uh medical records uh like uh, when they visit to my clinic, I have record all of their medical disease in the in the, in, in that record. So every time uh, when I need to refer to the hospital, I also always I give them a refer letter uh, to their parents, or maybe I took along with me, and mm. or maybe I took uh, even me I go going along with them. So I, when I, when we reach the hospital, I explained to the, the hospital doctor that uh, they have some, some medical chronic disease. Uh, so what about that? Uh, in, uh, what treatment I've given? So I o- always inform about that. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, I've give uh, the medical record along with them if I couldn't go get along with them. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, on my side, I think it's very clear everything from a functionality from today's situation point of view, but also what we can offer. I see Dr. Kyo, I, I hope I pronounce it well. Uh, I don't know if you want to say you. something, Dr. Kyo. And I know you're running another a, a digital health company as well. Maybe you can share experience and things. Maybe we can work together on this, uh, you know, teaming up. Yeah. And, uh, Thanks. Um, uh, I'm running the Siwaka Care. Siwaka Care is uh, one of the medical website in Myanmar language. And mm-hmm. I'm the owner of the Siwaka Care. And mm-hmm. uh, Siwaka Care run as a LMS, a learning management system. And mm-hmm. I run uh, online courses for Raya College examination like the MRCP. Okay. <laughs> so, so. Son, I have some experience in automation on a digital platform. Mm-hmm. Now, but the main problem is uh, uh, most of our Myanmar people, Myanmar people uh, uh, does not go to the website strictly. Yeah. They only may, may spend most of their time on the social media, particularly yeah. Facebook. <laughs> one of the main problems <laughs> to attract people to my website, I have to post many times on, on Facebook, Facebook, and then and, and direct like, to, to my to my website, website. When link yeah. on the Facebook Facebook page. Yeah. And the main problem is that I think for Myanmar, my, yeah. uh, I have a lot of you no know, courses as. Mm-hmm. share on the screen and yeah. these are really send I, i'm trying for some automation and if yeah. you click on one course and you can get net ne- yeah. click to subscribe yeah. yeah and do you work with dr wine on this for reproductive health dr wine are you part mm-hmm. of this sure. platform already sure uh, yeah, no, not yet, not yet. 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 Not yet.
but i i i we, we have some plans we are launch here some plan yeah, yeah. as uh, we can then you can log Chimo. in here and then transfer them uh, course fee to yeah. the bank account and you can get access to this Chimo course content. now my style is like that and but uh the main problem is, as I previously said, most people does not go straight to my website. I have to yeah. find from Facebook. And, yeah. and I also create a blog for UK Value Network uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, to join with a Boston match. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No, absolutely. Um, that tells me, and oh, maybe you can help me there. Uh, do we need? Do should we work with uh, with Dr. Kai when it comes to the education piece? Because um, when it comes to video content, I mean, he can be a partner, uh, and we can explore for peer to peer education and not the uh, you know to use our own platform. Um, you know, we're always willing because we need content in Burmese, eh? uh, and if he already has it, why recreate completely everything? But I leave it up to you on. To give you a bit of a context, uh, Apostle Med, right? If you look at the history of Apostle Med, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, founded by academic professionals who can design mm -hmm. the, the curriculums. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. John was part of the, the team where they organized the curriculum design process for Myanmar Medical uh, Institute, uh, uh, Myanmar yeah. Medical University, right? So that's uh, the one of the biggest. University of Medicine, yeah. My University of uh, Medicine, and so that's where yeah. all the elites are sort of uh, joining, right? Because the top, mm -hmm. the first, the top of the thing. So basically, this is where I think uh, Boss Ahmed is sitting. So Boss Ahmed is uh, some kind of sort of uh, uh, so every time, oh, right? So, so so I can give you an an, an analogy where you can always see Apple, or you can always see Samsung. Apple has uh, ARM processor and yeah. Samsung has ARM processor and yeah. ARM doesn't have any manufacturer at all. ARM only yeah. has the, the IP. So this is okay. where Apostle Matt sits in. So Apostle Matt always is the IP orchestrator and mm -hmm. IP sort of the organizer for all the educational programs uh, which has okay. been happening uh, uh, sort of across Myanmar. So if you look at okay. IVS, right? IVS is uh, Institute of Vocational Studies where Yep. Apostle Matt is responsible for organizing the curriculum design, uh, launching, implementation, recruitment, and everything. Uh, okay. We're partnering with KBC Group of Company. So that's, that mm -hmm. kind of thing is like uh, where uh, their strong suit is. So uh, yeah. I think uh, we can collaborate or Apostle Matt can collaborate with you on those, those things, I guess. On the education uh, part. So what, what I hear from you, on sorry to interrupt, is you have strength in the content, but the infrastructure the technology the structuring of the healthcare world is where you're struggling and that's where we come into the picture yeah we have two things right not just technology but uh, this is what you do right now right because we have a, a hard time trying to orchestrate right uh, different specializations to come together yeah. to create the real system which is really yeah. mobilizing the ecosystem in such a way that we have like sort of a well coordinated care for youth in the schools so this I is understand. where I'm, I'm really struggling right now because as an uh, individual who is not a doctor, it's very difficult to do that myself. Uh, at the I same understand. time, right, uh, what I am bringing in as an uh, ecosystem architect is where uh, I'm trying to solve like the problem uh, as seen by Dr. Cho. Because you see, in 2014, uh, before uh, and before, right, uh, people have uh, some kind of uh, platforms where they try to onboard people onto the platform. Mm -hmm. That was like how freelancer.com works. That was how all those platform works in the past until yeah. 2015. But in 2020, nobody can start doing that because one platform is competing against another platform in yeah. terms of sort of automation, in terms of orchestration, in terms of everything. And it is very difficult to even compete the FANG, the giants, where they all have their own platform as well to eat away the king of the ecosystem. So this yeah. is the reason why, right, these days, the strategy is not about designing a platform first. It is about understanding what is wanting to be born 
in the ecosystem itself. Yeah. And understanding the orchestration process in such a way that they are pairs of value creators and value consumers already happening in the ecosystem in different yeah. smaller kinds of transactions. And then yeah. picking the best arena for us to aggregate all those sub niches so that we have what I call economy of scope. And yeah. this is uh, what we are doing with the care condition process. But uh, this is another challenge that I have, uh, I'm struggling with because uh, I have a hard time trying to explain this to Burmese people when it comes to orchestration, mm. when it comes to uh, uh, value creation, when it comes to understanding how to mobilize the ecosystem. Because in reality, right, uh, this is the way I see it. I'll show, show you how I see it. So um, give me a second. So uh, let me just give you a very good overview of what we are doing. We don't start from uh, digitalizing or enhancing digitally first, because this is where most of the system fail. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. I, I have seen a lot of like sort of digital ecosystem dying in Myanmar right now. As of today, I met with like five CEOs of different, different platforms. And then they are all like having a lot of headaches inclusive yeah. of uh, Myanke, which is one of the biggest uh, telemedicine companies. So right now, right, the reason is because of this, right? Because as you see, what I am trying to just envision or organize or orchestrate uh, together in the ecosystem is this. So we start from uh, the vision because uh, this is how we build, right? So we just build by uh, digitally enabled system where we just move to the digital enhancement and then we just build the platform and then we just build the ecosystem around it. So that's how we build it. But in reality, right, we can do that. In reality, this is how I see it as an ecosystem designer. So we start from ecosystem mobilization strategy, which is the starting point of everything. And then we always start with the, the, the beginning with the end in mind. So. Uh, we need to start defining what they call the level four OKS. So in the level four, right, it is about the economy and the business ecosystem. So right now, what I'm trying to just orchestrate is to create some kind of caregiving economy for the youth. Where Apostle Matt is responsible for orchestrating all the activity in such a way that we have well-balanced uh, sort of uh, uh, processes adding together to help the schools in the best way that uh, we could be helping. So this is where we are studying. And then the next step is where we talk about uh, how we define the platform. So we are looking at four different components in the platform. The first component, what they call peer-to-peer -peer discovery system, a marketplace itself, and where, which is where we just enable the niche, which is the solution provider, which are the 40 providers in the ecosystems. So these guys are having their own small little sort of uh, companies, one competing against another without really understanding that they should be working together to sort of uh, co-create the solution for the schools, right? So that's where we start doing the orchestration. So, and at the same time, uh, we have the second component where we just also think about the curriculum and the process so that all those smaller companies can really use our orchestration services in such a way that they could upgrade their performances through our learning management system and all the things. And then we have like a, the third thing, which is like transition enabling system, which is not just payments, but all about scheduling, all about sort of uh, defining the right kind of sort of orchestration processes for different services. And then we also talk about the fourth item, which is the reputation and identity. So I I'm only talking about four different systems. Let me finish first. So the last one is where <laughs> We talk about the identity and reputation system where we built the coordinated report cards, which is the key orchestrator of the ecosystem. Okay. So this is the level three. And then we have level level sort of a two, tech enhanced. And then this is where sort of you come in. You come in like level uh, uh, one, two, and three. Because this is where, and of course, at the same time, you will also talk I about- I understand level. you. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's how we are approaching this. And of course, I am not successful. I I only have like successfully worked with Dr. John to come up with this kind of strategy first. And then eventually uh, my plan is to orchestrate everyone in the discussion to understand 
where they are coming from. And then we need to just uh, create a strategy where we need to sort of convince them about the orchestration approach, all those things, because everyone is so focused in their own specialization that they don't know no. what they are co-creating. So that's the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, I fully understand what you're building and uh, the approach you want to take. I'm happy we organized this. I'm really thankful Dr. Wine opened up, Dr. Hain talked to us, and Dr. Ong as well. I strongly believe with what you just shared as your vision, Ong, and I fully concur with you looking. In reality, it's not that um, we are not successful. Healthcare technology is still very immature across the globe. Listen to me, across the globe. So we will need to be patient. That's why I encourage what you're doing now manually. Please keep doing it while the world accepts fully technology because we are not there yet. So the best we can do is take small pieces. I love the vision of the caregiving economy for the youth. But you know where I'm, I'm not okay with you? Is it's coming from your mind on. Remember, I'm the one that pushed you for you guys to get Dr. Wine, all those doctors around the talk, because I wanted to hear directly from them. It's not you, I, so you own, and I and Dr. Kai that owning technology that should drive this agenda. No, we need to let Dr. Wine, we need to let Dr. N, we need to let Dr. Ong. Of course, we can show them the whole technology that's possible, but they have to tell us. So I want us to go back to them and say, hey, we think the caregiving economy for the youth is something. And we need to let them tell us if it's true. Because they are the one on the ground today and they are the ones knowing. And I ultimately, actually for me, among the three doctors that were that are here, including Dr. Wine without disrespect, disrespecting you, Dr. Wine, for me, Dr. Ong is the critical person with from whom we need to get the answer is caregiving is the caregiving economy for the youth something and if it's something do we start through dr wine meaning with health talk to trigger that 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 you know a vision that you have on or do we start from the hospital angle you, you see all the questions I was asking about chronic illness of patients. This is where Dr. Hain can be critical. But you will see that with your vision of caregiving economy for the youth, Dr. Ong is going to be critical to tell us if there's something in there. And if there's something, what's the right angle to penetrate the market and to get to trigger that market? We can do it all. But we need to choose uh, the angle that's going to be extremely successful for okay, us. Okay, okay. Uh, let me just let me jump into that uh, to get, give you the updates, right? So right now, yeah. uh, two people are risk missing from this discussion. Uh, sure. The first person is the leader of the school ecosystem because okay. right now the the finding the recent finding about uh, coronavirus case that uh, in reality people don't uh, really think about uh, well coronavirus or whatever, right? What they think about is what they have in mind. Hey, I want the health talk. I want the RH. Uh, I want yeah. the sort of emergency. Or I Absolutely. want the whatever, right? So we Absolutely. are not going against that. So instead, right, what you're really doing right now is to anchor all those activity into uh, what they call PE, uh, physical education, because physical education is already part of the school ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And in the physical education, right, we talk about sports where it's all about breaking the Olympic record or whatever. And then at the same time, right, uh, as you have this kind of sort of uh, uh, a need by the, the, the parents in such a way that when you have those high sort of like extracurricular activities by high schools there, then you can just get into Ivory League University across the globe. So this is where we are anchoring the incentives. So uh, for me, right, it is all about starting with the incentives, what they are getting from it. Uh, and then uh, we talk about the impact because, for example, Dr. Wine is very good in an uh, area where she cares about the impact. Dr. John is very good in an area where he cares about the impact. And then Dr. Joy is also like having some level of sort of uh, interest in the ecosystem in such a way that they want some impact. But at the same time, uh, as the ecosystem designer uh, with uh, Dr. John, what we are trying to create is some kind of sort of uh, economic incentives in such a way that these people start joining the ecosystem 
with their own individual particular interests. But eventually, sort of ending up sort of contributing for the economy in such a way that we have sort of a well connected care. So this is where we build the records at the side effect, not the main effect. We are running the healthcare sports event, which are lucrative event in sort of a business. That's why everyone wants to join. And then when they join, all we just do is that we just keep the records at the side effect. So that eventually those records are starting to just prove them that, hey, this is the value because we don't need, we can't tell them, we need to show them. So that's, that's uh, what I sort of learned from my bus experience. So that's why right now I only focus on the business and I only sort of focus on the, the money first. And then when uh, they are looking for money, because right now I'm showing them that, hey, if you want to just sell to 900 schools, you cannot sort of uh, drive cars and then talk to like 900 schools because that never works, right? Just carefully, I just give them the sort of financial model. They start crunching the model and then they start seeing that, hey, this is not scalable. And the only digital solutions are sort of helping them. This is where I, may, I managed to organize the initial team in this sort of a, this meeting. So eventually, right, uh, this is where I'm coming from. In terms of economics, I only look for ways to sort of align the incentive in such a way that we eventually attract people to create a sort of an impact in the ecosystem. So yeah, of course, this is a very complex subject, I understand. And I will be sort of uh, uh, dedicating my time and all my efforts to help. So th th one of the reasons that I bring the actual people to you is to just let you see that uh, these are the real <laughs> problem we are feeling yeah, on the ground it's 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 serious no it's serious and i'm thankful that we had brilliant people joining us uh, i have three minutes and i need to jump into my next meeting so this whole discussion is recorded we're going to make sure clean it and send uh, everybody the link because at least we also have you know a good record of this starting discussion I see where you're coming from uh, on. I see where the doctors are coming from. I also understand what we want to ultimately achieve. I'm gonna use that to send you a proposal on for you to explore couples of scenarios based on what I've seen. And then we can choose together the scenario we feel. Again, I think what's critical now is the right anchoring point. If we manage to get the right angle, we are going to grow with the growth of the health tech space. Because again, health tech is still at its infancy across the globe, literally across the globe from the US. In the Netherlands, my doctor only recently created a website. So across the globe, healthcare and technology, it's still very, very young. Uh, but can we create the right angle so that we grow with it in Myanmar beyond, because I'm sure you have companies doing appointment making to the doctor. So those simple uh, technology, but we're talking about digitalizing and automating the whole thing. But for that, we need the anchoring point, which allows us to build the ecosystem around it. That's what you're mentioning on. And I know money is an important element, but I want to challenge you. Shouldn't we go from the impact so we can get big data and from the big data, get the money? But let me prepare something for you and then use that as a discussion on what will be the right way for us to capture the Myanmar market and, you know, go from there to get the Southeast Asia market. Thank you so much for your uh, support and uh, time as well, because this is very helpful for us. Thank you, guys. I need to go. Thanks, Dr. Wine. Thanks, John, Dr. John. Thanks, Dr. Kao. It was great chatting with you. We stay in touch anyway, and uh, surely we'll uh, get connected, and you will get the recording as well afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Bye.